call this Board of Health uh, meeting to order so everybody can go home tonight. Um, I really appreciate uh, everybody showing up. And the reason why we had this emergency meeting is because Alex has been sending in our cases just randomly to get sequenced. Um, and overwhelmingly, they've been all Delta. And they are still overwhelmingly Delta. But last night, uh, a case came in that was sequenced as Omicron. So we are now officially have Omicron in um, town. It's very tra highly transmissible. And so for the next two or three weeks, I, I feel like it's gonna shoot up and then hopefully shoot, you know, settle down. But for the next two or three weeks, we're gonna be pretty crazy. And we just have to take some mitigating measures. So Alex, do you wanna talk about what we were thinking about? Hi, yes. Hi, everyone. Uh, so just given our daily case counts and looking at um, the numbers, I mean, uh, I, I, I could share you my screen and um, you guys can look at, you know, what I'm seeing right now with COVID cases. I mean, it's just going up. Um, you should be able to screen share, Alex. Okay. Let me... Yes. Open system. Oh, I, I can't do it right now. Anyway, um, it's a really pretty graph and it's just um, showing that the numbers are just exponentially uh, increasing. Um, so with, with the emergence of the Omicron here in uh, Deerfield, um, we you know really want to increase the uh, the elevation you know, just elevate that a mask advisory is um, um, should really become a an, an order to really um, allow it, to make sure that people are aware of the gravity of the situation um, and we uh, believe that at this time uh, mass mandate for um, the residents uh, for the public coming into the town hall or municipal buildings is really important. Uh, instead of just doing an advisory, now we're uh, requiring people to wear a mask um, as a really good secondary prevention uh, measure. And having that added public health layer uh, of also getting a vaccine, we're, we're having the look, looking at uh, also having uh, by appointment only interactions with the municipal employees and um, those who are invited and have, uh, you know, access um, to enter the space, uh, municipal uh, offices, and then we're looking at moving in order to limit the spread even further when it comes to open public meetings to do it remotely, uh, to really just you know lower our transmission rate as much as we can, and and really helping with that keeping government going. Basically, we want to keep our municipal government operating. So what we're proposing is a, a required mass for uh, municipal employees and anybody coming into municipal buildings. We would close municipal buildings um, and they'd be to the general public and they'd be open to, by appointment only. Uh, appointments would be met in the big meeting room. Um, Alex will set up the filter, make sure it's uh, the filter is filtered that air in that space people can meet in the big meeting room otherwise they'll be you know in their own workspaces uh committee meetings are on zoom obviously we'll evaluate this every week um i do think it's a temporary short-term um kind of thing if omicron is you know a two or three week to it peaks and then we um back off casey so you would want you would want to vote an or um a mask order yeah um alex wrote this up uh, do you want me to screen share what i sent you alex it's got the header in it uh sure and you can see whether it's the right one so this is what alex sent me I added a header and a footer to it just 
Well, Alex updated a little bit. Um, instead of saying in region one, we're gonna say New England. Yeah, Casey, and then uh, when it comes to this document, uh, we updated a few of them as well. So um, I'm gonna send you the updated version right now. All right, so you want me to, I'll put in the headers and everything. Yeah, or... I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna update you the updated version. So let me share that. We, we went over it a little bit better. It, it, region one, people don't know what that is. So it's, you know, region one is New England. You know, we did some changes like that. Yeah, basically what we want is municipal employees to pay attention. We can't afford our um, government to shut down. So we just don't have a lot of depth and bench capacity for you know people being out sick. So people need to just pay attention. Basically, if you're collecting a Deerfield paycheck, you need to wear a mask. And we ask you to just be very, very vigilant that you're really wearing it correctly. You cover your nose. Just hanging off your face doesn't count. It needs to be over your nose and your mouth. And just be very careful, um, you know, social distancing. We're back to two really basic things that work, social distancing and mask wearing. And I'd probably be in favor. I mean, I think again, if, you know, we've learned a lot about this, this, um, you know, this, virus over the last two years i think if people are you know, as we as we were working in the last i don't know when we had our last mandate people would have their mask on if they were interacting with other people if they had other people in their office if they're sitting by their desk by themselves i don't really see the need for it to have it on constantly uh, but if they're if they have people if they're going across the hall to see other people or if they have you know, we're not going to have people coming to the min window, but obviously, if they're if they have by appointment appointments, they have to have it on over their nose. Um, that makes sense to me. It makes sense that you know we should take this time and um, try to try to get. You did put that exemption in try there. Try to get the our, cases down. What's that? Um, we did put in the exemption if employees in shared spaces and municipal offices are not required to wear a mask if social distancing of at least six feet or greater yeah, or in there by sense. themselves that's good. in the office. Right, yeah. okay. that's good. This is this is not to be onerous. This is just right. common sense. I practice. think most people are have recently started to do that anyways on their own. A couple of weeks you know. ago, we started. Yeah. We didn't matriculate to everybody, but I did talk to Alex about some concerns I had from an HR perspective. So. Now that we have something in writing, I would like to send it to Kate and yeah. have her review it because if it does have any, if it could have an issue for the town for its employees, then I want to know about it before we get smacked with something. Right. Um, granted, I understand the purpose is to protect everybody. I just yeah. tend to want to act in an abundance of caution. And you guys can vote it. I will send it to her as soon as we're done. But I also have to notify everybody. And so I talked to most of the department heads because Carolyn and I chatted this morning and Alex and I have chatted several times today. So I knew we were looking at that discussion, mm -hmm. what it fleshed out to be, you know, Alex gave me information um, later well, in the afternoon. Again, if you're a highway guy and you're in your truck by yourself, no. Yeah. No issues. You don't need to wear a mask. Right. Please stop. Two in the truck. Right. But if there's two of you, you got to wear a mask. Same yeah. as a police officer. Police officers in a cruiser by themselves, no problem. It's Kevin. Yeah. Um, since last week, um, talking with Alex, because I had two guys that popped up positive. Um, so since last week, we've been mask on all the time, um, separate during. Uh, break time their their lunch one yeah. person to a truck um and you know as needed we, we sprayed and wiped hard surfaces in the whole nine yards so so that's basically where we're at with with highway right now so you already doing been, that. we've been like that since last week okay Kevin, that's wonderful all that's the, great. All we're asking is people just wash their hands wipe down surfaces again because this is highly highly contagious and any of the contractors that have come in you know during 
you know, I let them know ahead of time, hey, if you guys are coming inside the building, you got a mask up, um, which which wasn't a, wasn't a problem whatsoever, which is nice. Um, yep. So we're good. All right. I, I, I will we'll reevaluate this on Wednesday again. Um, we don't want to penalize our businesses. Our businesses are doing really well. Yep. And a lot of them are. You walk in, they got masks on already. Yeah. I mean, you go to the pizza place, they're all masked up. Yeah. Yep. Um, and that's the kind of thing that we would be thinking about is just requiring businesses to have their employees so they can protect the public and be protected from the public. The kids at school are trying very hard. There are always a few, but honestly, um, the most kids are getting it. They know that uh, if they want to continue with sports, I mean, I've, you know, had interactions with Carl, Sarah, and, um, you know, the athletic director and Darius, and, you know, it's very clear the kids really want the programs to keep going. So they're trying to wear their masks. Um, you know, the refs are reminding kids to wear masks. So, um, you know, I, I think everybody is working very hard. The community is working very hard, but I think we need to notify them that now we've really got to pay attention. This is, yeah. this is our, we're going to be shifting and people are going to be getting sick and we will have the Vax bus on Friday here. So please try to get, if you yep. are not vaccinated or you are, I mean, anybody eligible five and up. You need a booster. Uh, yeah, or boosters please sign up. Um, the link, Alex has it on the website and anyone can call Alex. if They have he trouble signing up, but we, we need people to pay attention. Um, it is appears to be that if you are vaccinated and boosted, you are just going to have mild symptoms. However, we're following the, the hospitalizations, you know, um, in the at Franklin, we're you know trying to figure things out. Um, if we hear anything different, if it acts anything differently, we will be sure to pass it on. But what we're saying is, if if you're not vaccinated, please, 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 either stay home or get vaccinated. Um, it's it's you know another little pumpkin came in today, you know tonight just before our meeting, you know it, it, it's the under fives that I'm really worried about. So. People need to pay attention so that we can protect our little kids because those little ones are, are not eligible yet. So they don't have much choice. We just have to pay attention and protect each other. So, and keep things open. This is how we're gonna well, make it. Yeah. I mean, and we said, I guess, you know, when all the other towns were doing a mask mandate months ago when the numbers weren't like they were, we said that if, you know, if we felt the cases were shown to increase and we felt like it was an important uh, step to take that, you know, we would only take that step if we felt it was right. And I hope people trusted us to, to not put a mask mandate in place when we did. And I hope they trust us now that we're doing the right thing that we feel it's serious enough to, to put in a mask mandate for municipal buildings. Alex. I, I just want to share with the Vax bus information that, um, 340 individuals signed up uh, great. so far as of right now. Uh, That's great. I mean, it looks like we're going to be able to meet our target um, with increasing the fully vaccinated status come uh, February 4th if everything goes according to plan and uh, the Vax Plus um, comes um, during that time. Uh, things are, things are going to be looking good on that primary prevention level. Yeah. Uh, and I think that uh, with this order, I think it's going to, um, it, it, it's, it's a really good step forward. And I think as what we all said, we're going to reevaluate this on a weekly basis, mm -hmm. the numbers shift otherwise, and the sequencing, you know, result otherwise as well, then, you know, we, we adjust accordingly. So, yeah. Okay. So I'll make a motion to approve the, um, revised text for a, Adjustment to our mass policy. Do you want to second that, Dave? Uh, Dave Wolfram, second it. Okay. Is there any further discussion? Yeah, I just second it. Okay. Nope. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. Casey. Nope. I just have one question before you approve it. Um, mm -hmm. Alex, do you want me to make these these links live that are listed? 
I tried making it live and for some reason in the Word document, it says there's an error. So that's why I- un Oh, okay. All right. It. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. <laughs> I just wondered, I figured I'd ask before they voted it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, well, that's okay. If you want to, if you want to try it, by all means, that, that's more than okay. Yeah. If I can make them live, would you prefer me to make them live, Alex? Yes, please. <laughs> if I can't, we'll just leave it that way and people can copy and paste. That's okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. All those in favor? Okay, do we have to? Do we have to? Uh, do we have to amend that? Do we. I'm just asking if we have to amend it to sign that there after review by attorney. Oh, that's a good thought. Yes. Um. Uh, that's a nice, friendly amendment. Thank you. We'll have. We'll come in and sign it after um, the attorney reviews it. Is that okay, Casey? To vote it that way. I think. You want it to go into effect. Yeah. What I would and say as a friendly amendment, this may be revisited after attorney review. Right. We can always adjust. Yeah, it I mean, you can always re vote it. Whatever. So yes. I think coming in and signing it is one thing. Right. Um, I wouldn't worry about the attorney thing. As soon as you guys are done, I'm going to send it to her anyway. And if we have to okay, change good. it, we'll change it. Yeah. Let us know. Can you, we just, need to change um, it. Can you just use the okay. stamps on this, Casey? That's my question. So based on the friendly amendment, may I ask if the board wants to um, entertain a friendly amendment just to use the stamps? That would be sure. Fine. That's fine. <laughs> oh, look it. We've got case counts. Now we got the map. Um, OK, great. All right. So did you take your vote? So no, not yet. But let Alex, um, Alex, go ahead and explain that graph. Thank you, Casey, for giving me access. <laughs> so uh, this is all from the, the FERCOG uh, numbers that we collect, daily counts. And I just want to give this nice little visual. Uh, this, this is as much information I, as I can get right now. Uh, I'll, I'll continue to work on it if the board wants me to collect more. But you can see it's just the upward, upward trend it's still mostly Delta right now, but we do have a new, we have, you know, uh, two Omicron cases right now. And so we just have to uh, focus on that. So that's all I want to show. I think everybody should just, uh, any of the public watching this meeting and seeing that graph, what this doesn't show you is all the people that tested at home positive with the little take home test. Those aren't accounted for anywhere in the state or um, in these numbers. So, you know, it, the numbers that people see are woefully inaccurate. There, there's a lot more cases out there than what we see and what's alarming us right now. So that's kind of, we also have that in the back of our minds that that the state hasn't found a way to capture all of those at home tests as well. And we know that, you know, just talking to your friends and neighbors, you know, you, you, you know somebody who knows somebody who's, who's dealing with it with their family right now. So that's why we're taking these steps. And yeah. I do, I just, I just got confirmation that I'm going to be receiving more of the Bidenix now test as well. Oh, good. Oh, uh, Alex, thanks. That's great. Well, that's great. We're going to continue well into January, I hope. Mm -hmm. um, oh, sure. So, well, well, I'll continue on that front as well. And I think we're doing a really good job so far in Deerfield. So, yay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All those right. in favor? Trevor. Hi, Hi Trevor McDaniel. Dave. Hi, Hi Dave Wolfram. Hi, right, Carolyn Ness. So it's unanimous, Casey, and you can use our stamp after the um, lawyer review. Oh, you're muted, sweetie. I'll add that it was approved today. Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for okay. coming. And I just, yeah. again, I want to emphasize that people, the majority of our cases, we only have two Omicron that we're aware of. But that's a start and it goes crazy after that. But ultimately we still have Delta, which is the more se severe variant. So please, please be careful for no other reason than you don't want to get sick. So. Okay. Yeah, thank, thank you everybody. Appreciate Motion you through. all coming. When's, when's our next meeting? Wednesday night. Wednesday. Select board, board of health have a meeting Wednesday. And, we and could, it is on the, I, I did put an allowance for any adjustments on the agenda just in case. Okay, good. Thank okay. you. We'll, we'll be able to watch this. All right. Thank you very right. much, everybody. I'll second Trevor's motion.
Okay. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Okay, another. Thank you, uh, thanks, Alex. Thanks, Casey. Thank appreciate it. Thanks, Alex. I appreciate everything.